G'day and welcome back to The Geek Teacher. This is a third in the series looking at making our own version of a fly swat game. Uh, in, today's le- in the last couple of lessons we've looked at putting a picture box on the form and being able to click on it and how to make scores happen when we hit the picture box and when we miss it, uh, how to make the score go down. Uh, and then in the last lesson we looked at moving it to a random location whenever we clicked it. So this lesson is a natural progression from that and what we're going to do is make the picture box move of its own accord at a regular interval so that you actually have to f- chase it and click on it with your mouse to make the score either go up or down. Now that obviously means that the game is much more um, much more game-like uh, rather than being <laughs> quite basic and easy to hit the picture. So to do this, we're going to open our ice squish uh, or whatever you called your project and uh, make sure that we get back to the form. So at the moment, we have a label over here that just says score. Our label that will be the score, we have our BTN exit and our pick squish. So at the moment, what happens uh, is quite simply, you click on the picture, it moves, your score goes up, you miss, and the score goes down. Okay, and so in the last lesson we looked at how to make the exit button actually go with the resizing of the form using anchor, that's very important, and we looked at random and also limiting the uh, height and width for top and left of the picture box to move it and make sure it doesn't go completely off the screen. So let's look at that code again, this is what we've got to end the program. Um, this is what we've got to take the score off. Remember we used cint to change whatever is in here into an integer. So that is technically a string. The text is technically a string. We change that in, into an integer and uh, then we can work with it mathematically. Now it may very well work without that. In fact it does. But uh, it's just good programming practice to make sure that you um, really try to trap any issues that are happening there. Likewise, when we click on the picture in pick, squish, click, we actually change the text property again to an integer and then we add one to it. Now what we do in this bit of code here is we're creating a randomize. We're starting the random number generator using that randomize and then we're moving the left of the pick, squish. So that designates where it is on the horizontal or the x axis um, axis uh, and we're moving that to a random position in terms of the form width, and remember we use me to refer to the parent form, so me width, so that's the entire width of the form, minus the width of the picture box, so that gives us that nice little cut off at the right hand side so that it can't disappear completely off the form. Of course then we randomize that, and remember this produces a decimal between uh, 0.0000 whatever 1 and uh, 0.99999. Um, so we can use that to create a percentage of this, but that will return a um, that will return a decimal or a real number there, a double, uh, which means that we will get something along the lines of three hundred and forty-two point six seven eight, for example. Um, now we can't use the point six seven eight. So what we do with that, with this returned random, okay, is we get you we get just the integer portion of it. So that will be the 346. So all the stuff before the decimal point. It does not round it. That's important to remember. It does not round it. It just takes the um, the integer portion. So uh, in that regard, if we were trying to um, make a random number between 0 and, 19, 0 and 20, uh, not including 20, then we could say inum equals um, int rnd times 20 and that will actually return uh, this will return numbers including 0 to 19 it will not include the number 20 because remember we're never going to hit the 20 20 um, we're never going to hit the top level this number here because uh, int only returns the integer portion it doesn't round it up so we're going to have say for example 19.9999999 that's still going to return 19. To make this actually able to hit 20, so for example if we want to go between 1 and 20, we would have have to change this and put a plus 1, so that that would return 0 to uh, 19, 
and then add one to it. So if we've got 19.99999, that will return a 19. We add one to it, it actually makes 20. Likewise, if it returns 0 0.001, that will return a zero. We add one to it and it gets us one to 20. If we want zero to 20, the simplest way of doing that uh, is simply to increase your upper limit to 21. And then you'll get numbers zero to 20. Uh, forgot to mention that yes, last lesson, so uh, I'm mentioning that today. Okay, so I didn't want to delete all of that, just this. So that gets us uh, random there and we're returning an integer portion. Again, we do the same with the top and that works with the vertical. And uh, what we're doing is limiting its height to the width of the height, sorry, of the pick squish back from the bottom of the form so that the picture can't go completely off the form and then we're randomizing that as well. So that's how we get it to move all around the screen like this. There you go. Um, so what we're going to do today is we actually want it to be able to move by itself. So every now and then it will just go bang to there and then over to here and then down here and then over here and then there and then there maybe. You know, we want it to be able to move around. Now to do that, we're going to use a control called timer. Now what a timer does is you can tell it looks like a, a clock. Um, a timer uh, runs a code inside it at a regular interval. So whatever interval you specify, every time it hits that or ticks over, like a clock, tick, 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 it will run the code that's in it. So this one we're going to call timer move, T-M-R-M-O-V-E, over here. So T-M-R-M-O-V-E, T-M-R for timer and move because it's a, it's move. This enabled property, there's not a lot of properties here. It actually um, says whether or not the timer is going to be at working or not. So for it to start moving the picture, we need that to be true. So set enabled to true. Uh, generate member we don't care about. Modifiers we don't care about. And tag we don't care about today. Um, interval is the next one that we actually worry about. Now this is the speed at which it will tick. Okay, and it's in milliseconds. So 100 is 100 milliseconds. Uh, to get a second, it needs to be 1,000. So 1,000 milliseconds to a second. If we want it to be two seconds, we would change that to 2,000. If we want it to be one and a half seconds, it would be 1,500. But let's start with 1,000 for seconds, and uh, there you go. It's actually not doing anything, though, because we haven't given it code. Now, because we've actually done this step before, it's really easy to make this work. We double-click on timer move over here, and you'll notice it gives us the tick event. That's really important to remember. We want it to be when it ticks. So every time it goes tick 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 we want it to move it so move the picture box to a random location excellent now does anybody remember the fact that uh, we've actually already done this in fact we've done this up here so what we can do is just grab what we've already done cut it and then paste it down in here so now we've got the randomize, the moving of the picture, and that in here. So let's take a look and see if it works for us. Um, there we go. You can notice it's moving. If I resize that, it'll give it more room to move. If I resize it back, more room, or less room to move, sorry. There you go. Um, click on it, it goes up, goes up, miss, it goes down. So it's actually working for us. So that was what we did today. Uh, in our next lesson, we're going to add some difficulty levels. So uh, easy will be really slow like this. Um, normal will be a little bit faster and difficult will be insanely fast. So that's what we're going to look at in the next lesson. I hope you enjoyed this one. You've learned something about using timers to move an object to a random position. Stress less. Be ninja.